Welcome back to Math in Real Life and this first series that we've made for food and farming or this first set that we've made regarding food and farming and how mathematics can be used um, to grow food. Some of the things that you need to do, some of the things that you have to think about when you're growing food, when you're setting up a small farm or a garden. Okay. Now what we're going to do in this video is basically go back to the conversation we had with Marvin and Vanessa, I believe in the third video, and um, take out some little sections from from that meeting that I had with Marvin and Vanessa and the meeting was uh, quite, quite, quite a long time we sat down and talked for about three four hours and there's a lot of information that they shared so what I've done is go back to that uh, the video and I've edited and took out little segments that might interest you if you're interested in farming and if you're interested in knowing some of the logistics involved uh, in growing your own food okay and that's what we're going to do uh, in this video that's what we're going to share in this video and when Marv and Vanessa come back after the season after they've done their farming gig uh, sometime in in fall the end of fall middle of fall what we'll do is uh, sit down and talk to Marv and Vanessa and find out exactly what it is they've done and how they've improved their farm some of the changes they might have made okay so this will be our last little uh, video for this initial set and what uh, Marv has done is uh, he's uh, you know we've been in contact through email and he sent me an email giving me an update of where they are right now some of the things that they're doing and some of the changes they're making and right now we're sitting of uh, in middle of June and this is where they are right now so I'm just gonna read you this little update that Marv sent me and as soon as I finish reading it we're gonna go to the little sections and just take a look at some random thoughts right uh, just random information that they shared uh, during the little uh, chat that we had and hopefully this will give you a better idea of uh, you know the work that they're doing and what's involved in farming okay and um, the update goes as follows out here it's been busy enough and super wet. Uh, just when we thought it was drying out, a freaking tro tropical storm dumped rain for over 24 hours. We get in the field when it dries out enough, otherwise it's quicksand. Vanessa tilled up a square, um, about half an acre because we're quickly running out of space. We're at our goal of 40 customers. The seedlings are looking healthy as they go in, transplanted leeks, bok choy, Calarbi, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, uh, and broccoli direct seeded about eight beds before the rain came. Feeling a bit squeezed by time and space constraints that seem to be a part of the CSA reality. Looks like we might have to cut out, cut out some of the market crops. The rainy days helped us plan stuff out and organize to make our workspace a bit more efficient. We've got a new soil mixer, greenhouse addition to keep stuff dry and work as a base for a solar panel which will power a fan and some tunes out here and maybe a door timer for the chicken coop. Plus a dedicated office space that will keep uh, that will be kept clean. Finally some running water up in the loft and we patched up patched our uh, clay oven so we can bake bread again. The next thing to deal with is chickens which we're picking up in two weeks. Don't know if we'll do electric fencing or regular chicken wire for the run. Probably settle for the cheaper option because at 10 bucks a bird ready to lay plus feed we want to make a bit of money. Unfortunately we couldn't find a place that has heritage breeds that was within driving within reasonable driving distance so we settled uh, for some standard high yield mutant. I hope they're not too fierce. I'm taking some video and photos uh, but not much time for processing and editing unless I start doing it overnight. I'll send you a few pics on my next online session. Okay and that's the last uh, bit of information that I have from them and it's middle of June 2013. What we'll do as soon as they get back uh, in fall at the end of fall maybe beginning of winter uh, we'll sit down and have a little chat with Marvin and Vanessa and find out exactly what it is that they ended up doing uh, this season and some of the improvements they might have made to the farm some of the additions they might have made to the farm and take a look at their data and uh, you know maybe we'll do a little bit more crunching and maybe graph some of the data and find out uh, uh, you know how mathematics uh, plays into this game plays into the uh, system of farming and how it can be used to optimize 
Okay. And uh, right now, we'll just go and uh, take a look at some random thoughts from the conversation that we had uh, uh, in the past. And hopefully, uh, with all this stuff, with the last, you know, this being the eighth video that we made for this set, uh, this gives you a pretty good idea of uh, what it takes to grow food, to do farming, and how mathematics can be used uh, to optimize what it is that you're doing to improve your work. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. So you grow everything from seed. Uh, you don't do cuttings. No, I'm from no. seed, yeah. Everything from seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How come you guys don't do cuttings? Um, cuttings is mostly with like a, like shrubs and brush, brush kind of thing. It's like oh yeah, to uh, uh, yeah, peppers like you a, can't because they die. They're what are they called when they die? For they're annual. Annual. So perennial lasts all year. Yeah. And annual goes down, comes up. Yeah, you have to get the seeds. They'll go to flower, and then you harvest the seeds, and okay. then you plant again. Wanna, when if you were growing for seed, you would be, you wouldn't be necessarily harvesting the same. Uh, well, you'd be waiting for it to go fully mature, but then you'd also be selecting the stronger ones, I guess, to to make sure you have like a hardy, a hardy seed when it. When so it how do you know? How do you know if something's stronger than? Well, you look at your plants and like determine depending on like if something has less disease like if oh, so if there's a certain disease that'll attack a plant then you look for the one that's healthiest and then you size obviously i guess yeah, 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 yeah. when you're growing for market like the biggest thing yeah. and that decides basically uh so you you end up saving those ones some of those ones and yeah, you, you get can the seeds flag them it. so that oh. way you won't harvest them and oh, fuck yeah. but to do that like at the same time as you know like growing nice tasty veggies is kind of like you kind of have to have like a separate unless it's something like like what well, peas we saved yeah you could do it with almost anything but and we but did the peppers. cilantro and we did the um, dill yeah you um, saved the seeds yeah yeah wow. arugula we saved those were like pretty easy because they don't like cilantro and dill doesn't really cross pollinate and doesn't really so what happens if they cross pollinate? You get a new variant. Yeah, especially with like fruiting things, like um, say with your cucumbers, like everything that's in the cucurbit family, they could potentially cross pollinate. So like your cucumber and your zucchini and certain types of like squash and pumpkin could cross. Okay. So then like your cucumber might still look like a cucumber, or it might have a different color. Or it might have like different flesh that's not as juicy, and oh. you might get interesting stuff. Yeah, but you don't know. But you, you don't can't know count exactly. on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you can't count on that. Like ah. with squash, you get all these kind of weird, shaped, weird colored things that maybe don't taste so good. And oh, really? Like, that's how I they get the different types of squashes. You got all these variants. Yeah, well, someone bred them at some point, I guess. Yeah. Oh, so you could come up with a whole new species of. Wow. Yeah, for sure. There's some people that are so, doing yeah. it on purpose. Like this. I don't know if you saw that with me. Um, Do you care me? Or? No. I don't know. It was this guy. He was doing like growing pumpkins mostly for gourds that he would then uh, make art with or decorations or whatever. Oh. He was doing like bird houses and then he was doing all sorts of like painted stuff on them. Um, but he was trying to like select gourds for like the oddest shapes. So he would like actually hand pollinate his like fields oh. like experiment with different shapes that he would come up with. So you go with like a Q-tip and and you pollinate just like a bee. Play yeah. bee. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's time consuming. Oh my god. Yeah, but for something <laughs> like that, it's just your like main yeah. thing. That's sort of a hobby then. I think yeah. it was like a pretty big business. Like, pretty big business. Yeah, there's a huge field of squash. And but the thing too, like with monocrops like that, with the acreage that they have and stuff, like I think it'd be pretty impossible to grow anything i mean sure like there are organic grains and stuff but i think it's at a way smaller scale because like keeping on top of like you know like fungus that if that affect grain crops and yeah. like the um, corn borer that affects the corn crops like you couldn't really do much about it right if you're if you were trying to grow it organic and you have this like huge, huge. field like how do you do it and if it's always like planted at the same spot year after year then like the insects they go in the ground and then they come back in the spring oh and yeah then they so multiply they're like crazy, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're 
food's always there. They're just gonna like populate. Oh yeah, that's right. It's exponential growth for exactly. insects. Exactly. Yeah, it really <laughs> is exponential growth for insects. Yeah. That's why people. That's why you need to have like rotations and things yeah. like that or fallow. Oh, that's why something. they're doing a rotation. So the insects that feed off a certain crop can't feed off of the other crop. Exactly. Yeah. Or for yeah, or to cleanse the soil or whatever. Like whatever I think it is. In in China they do, or probably elsewhere as well, they do peanuts and cotton, and they kind of like the cotton um, somehow cleanses the pesticides a little bit from the soil. And they have to have opposing seasons. That would be ideal, right? If you're um, rotating crops. At this the growth, next year. You do next year. Yeah, or you yeah. could do like three years of one and then three, three years, years of, of another the other or something. Yeah. So are you, are you guys going to, are you going to take, uh, are you going to create a table for this season? Uh, if you yeah. uh, sit there and actually chart out what you got. Are you guys weighing things or you're not weighing things? We are uh, something. We haven't done like we kind of regretted not like doing like a getting gross tonnage kind. Yeah, of Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm that's thinking cool, about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that'd be great. But we only weigh the stuff that like we Put say there. like lattice or lettuce. We have to have like four or five ounces, or like beans. Like you, you, you charge by or not charge, but like you give it's by the pound. a dollar amount by the pound. Okay. Or if you take it to market, you want a pound bag of peas or whatever. So that stuff we weighed, but we never we never marked it down. Maybe like we could kind of estimate, but yeah, this year yeah. I think we'll we'll try and like tally it up and see how much like yeah, how what much food did we produce? Yeah, how much that food did you produce? Like that would be super. I think quite cool. a bit. I wish that, that we had tilled more land last fall. It's always like that, like the first year when we got bit there, the second yeah. year we were like, we should have like yeah. tilled more land, and then but I hate using the tractor, so that's why I always kind of like push it. To the what? Place. I don't know because it's it's not ideal to break up uh, like the like soil ground like yeah. that with a tiller. Like usually you'd want to like beat it up with something else before like with oh. a a disker, what I would choose. But we don't have that. Or like you could plow it, flip all like a plow takes the ground and like flips it around. Flips it like that. Oh, and the disker just makes slices, so you have to like. Oh, the disker is the thing that goes like this, right? They're just, just like discs that roll, so they like yeah, make yeah, I've slices. Seen those. Yeah, yeah. They're not like mechanized. They just you just pull it along. And like oh, okay, 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 okay. The tiller is the one that goes. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, so, so you're totally mixing it up. Yeah, oh. it's really hard on like the machine. Like rototilling, basically. Okay. Right. It's roto. Yeah, it's yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, but we have like a lot of rocks in the soil, so when you're doing your first passes on like a fresh piece of land, oh, then the you rocks, get these like yeah. chunks and like. I'm always so afraid of breaking it. That's why I don't like using it. Oh, okay. Then, like, if a rock gets caught in the tines, in the tiller tines, then it like, well, the transmission is designed to do it too, yeah. so it'll like oh. slip. The transmission will slip. But it just does this sound. It's like, da 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 Oh, <laughs> no. And then you like don't know if you broke something. and. But like, it doesn't take long to till it. You just park it on one end and go, Burr. Yeah, Pretty but you much. have to go like right. a lot of times yeah. on it. Oh, to get the. Mm -hmm. So you do it a few soft. times the first time, and then you kind of let the sun uh, beat the. kill the roots, oh. kill the weeds, because it's perennial weeds, like a lot of it is quack grass. Okay. So if, if you leave it there, it'll just like. grow again. Grow again if it rains. But if uh, ideally it's a sunny day, so it'll get baked. Oh. And then you want to pass again to expose more roots and again. Oh, that's yeah. how you get rid of the weed. Uh, yeah, eventually it dies off. I mean, off. The, they will come back even. Yeah, they do. You know, yeah. You got a weed, but. But still. Yeah. Yeah, there's figuring out water, stuff. like we hit, there's, there's water issues. And. Uh, oh, you, you're bringing in water from a creek or something? Or what are you guys doing? From a hose. From, from a hose. From, okay. Do you guys pay for the water? Is it like here? No, it's a paying? well. It's, oh, it's a well. Yeah, well on the land. On the mm -hmm. land, yeah. But it's a bit far, so we have like to use 400 feet of hose. Ooh. So that's, and by the time it gets there, it's not much pressure. Yeah. So it's, is there a pump at the hose, at the well? Uh, no, it's at my brother's house. We're on my brother's land. It's on my grandfather's oh, so, land. Oh, so it's, you're going through the, they're getting it from the well. And yeah. you're getting it from their tap. Uh -huh. We have uh, we have that water from the house there, but then we wanted just sort of a backup water system for out in the field. So we we got this like thousand thousand liter tank. Yeah. And uh, we were just figuring out like okay, 
if it's just sitting there, it's not going to do anything. Like we want to have a gravity feed just so we can water a bed at a time or something, okay, yeah. a drip hose or something. Yeah. Um, but then, so yeah, we were trying to figure out, do we have to put it up like 20 feet off the ground or, you know, how are we going to, how are we going to fill it or is the rain <laughs> going to fill it or what? Anyway, we ended up just putting it up maybe five feet mm -hmm. off the ground or four or five feet and just filling it with that hose for, for times when it was dry or something needed oh. irrigation. And there was a bit of pressure, but it wasn't like, it wasn't enough no. to... It wouldn't do a drip hose. It did do the it drip hose. It did do all the way to the end of just the Just a little, it just to like... To the end, barely. It didn't <laughs> go as much as like, like it probably should have been not I mean, they're pretty like them, but concentrated, like drip hoses, but yeah. we had to leave it on for a while, like longer than you would. Because yeah. I think they actually work for like 7 PSI, the drip hose. Like, they're supposed to be for like low pressure. Yeah. If you have too much pressure, it'll like... Oh, burst. shoot out or something. Yeah, oh. I don't know. Oh, but yeah, it would, I guess, at the beginning of the tube, and then at the end, it'd be like, oh. Yeah. But then once this the... This is your department. I've never played around with these things. <laughs> but once, it, like, the water level dropped to, like, halfway, then... Like, the pressure was, was gone. Right. Uh, so okay. we only had, like, 50... Um, 500 liters to work with. But yeah. that was only on emergency situations. You were going to use it, yeah, or yeah. The thing and, is, the whole summer was sort of an emergency. It was super it was dry, really dry. Uh, yeah. so we were kind of struggling. So I mean, wa water is a huge issue for you guys. Like the, your biggest issue is water. We didn't think it was going to be because I kept saying that with Martin was like, we got to plan our water, yeah. and I was like, the first oh, New summer, Brunswick, like it rains yeah. at least once a week. Yeah, <laughs> first summer we didn't water once. Like it was we didn't. Too wet. It was really, it was really rainy. But okay, I mean it. It was beautiful because we didn't have to water. Yeah, just no water. It wasn't even an issue. And then last year, I mean, like Ontario had it terribly, and like all the states, you know, if you heard about yeah, like all the droughts and the stuff, droughts brutal. And yeah, and there was yeah, there was a few times you walk out to the field, and it was just like just this it turned hard, like because it's kind of clay soil. Yeah, and, uh, it was just like rock hard and really parched looking and. So we were, things started wilting, and it's like, yeah, oh, we, we got a few water out there. So how did, so your your yield went way down for those weeks or for those? Um, it, or you like dealt it with it? It affected more like of the like tomatoes are affected mm. because then we get those droughts for like a couple of weeks, and then after that we get this like big rain or not even that big a rain. No, we're always expecting day, like a lot of rain, rain, but nothing really came. But tomatoes will crack. Oh. When they're like, they need too like, much water in one shot. Exactly. Yeah. Ah. So they're like dry. It's kind of like stretch marks or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh that's why some tomatoes get. Tissues, like. Oh, I didn't know why some tomatoes were like cracked. Yeah. I was like, oh, someone dropped them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like all of a sudden they got full of liquid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's they're cool. really so our tomatoes were not the prettiest. Ah, okay, but. Because those, once you get that that crack, that'll rot easier. So yeah. it's like kind of like not a good. Oh, you have okay, to eat okay. it right away, and the people too. We kind of gave them a warning. We're like, our tomatoes are not the prettiest, but they're tasty. Oh, okay, good enough. Yeah, yeah. And we got some comments. They're like, good thing you s told me that you gave us that email. Uh, I don't know. I saw these tomatoes, <laughs> but oh, they were so good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, they're just grotesque, like weird stuff. looking. Yeah. That was. Uh, but you guys got a lot of variety. Like you're planting how many different things? Close to know. 40, I'd say. 40 different things? I, I mean, there's like different varieties of one, like there'd be three types of peas, for example. Oh, okay, cool, like cool, cool. Different types of uh, kale. So are you doing this uh, yeah. as an experiment to see which which is going to grow what you're getting? Like, are you, but you don't know yet because you haven't counted your yields. You haven't. You plant, also the reason why you choose different varieties is because like some things are better when it's colder, some things are better when it's warmer. So like oh, lettuce, so for example, like lettuce doesn't really like heat that much, but there's certain varieties that have been bred to be like heat tolerant. So okay. in the spring you'll plant a lettuce that's like cold tolerant, and then in the fall, in the late spring for the like heat of the summer, then you'll plant a lettuce that's heat tolerant. Okay. And you do that with different crops too. There's like a certain type of pea that's like it was bred for like early harvest so it's like 50 days to maturity compared to 62 okay. but the one that's 62 days to maturity is bred for flavor so that's like the best pea 
Oh. So then you have like your earlier pea that you bring to the market early, but then like your better tasting pea will be like 12 days later. Oh, okay. okay so cool. you plant that one just so it's earlier, okay. which is good. Oh, but yeah, the, the waste too, I mean like you see like industrial farms that, or I, I remember going at like a pickle farm and or a cucumber farm and they were selling stuff to Bix and like they oh, had yeah. these sort of like quotas of like or like the cutoff sizes of like you know you need pickles this big or like 60 cents a pound and then if they get this big they're like 30 and then if they're oh. like bigger than this it's like you can't even sell it so oh, they really? ended up dumping you know, anything that was bigger than a certain size and then like Garbage. the size the side of the fields were just like littered with completely edible delicious uh, cucumbers, oh, cucumbers but not saleable so, so they're they're thrown away as they're picking them yeah yeah, it's really sad. Like, you get that on every farm. Like, even us, we had some waste, too. Like, there's just sometimes that and you, yeah, just, you just can't overproduce. eat it all. Like, yeah. you try, but... Yeah. So you, you, pick you it, make like, compost out of it, yeah? Yeah, and we yeah. Have, like, can always do that, yeah, for yeah. sure. But soon, yeah. So what are you doing with uh, food-wise? Like, how are you feeding the, the crops? Uh, like, compost, kind A of? Compost. Thing. You're doing compost. There's... Uh, there's compost that we got. We got a like a truckload full of, which is uh, made of uh, fish waste from from fish plants. Oh, so you're buying the compost? Uh, the fish we waste. bought basically one one load, which was a, it, it was a guy that collected this this waste from fish plants. Oh, and cool. There's also like peat farms out there, peat moss. Um, oh, okay, yeah. But yeah. I don't know if you know how they extract it, but it's kind of a it's of, destructive, isn't it? It's pretty bad, yeah. They, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. they drain wetlands, and that's where all the good stuff is. Yeah. Anyway, so there's there's peat companies, peat moss companies out there that supply most of North America. and um, Wow, they're draining like... Wow, well, yeah, I mean... They're within somewhere. reason, they have a quota they can take out, right? Yeah, they're, it's like based on some... I'm sure there's some protected land that they don't go in, but okay. anyway, the stuff we're getting is... Um, the stuff this guy makes is sort of secondary or it's too dry for them to sell or something like this and he mixes it with the fish waste oh, um, wow. so it's this peat moss and the, the fish waste and uh, so it's pretty like pretty rich stuff pretty so it's good so that's what you're using for fertilizer for food mm -hmm. yeah victoria uh, my partners in victoria victoria just introduced uh, they gave every, every resident composting little container Oh, yeah. with biodegradable bags like they were she, you know she's she's a huge gardener and stuff so she does gardening but and they're, they were composting before mm -hmm. but now they have a, like a container composting thing and they gave them garbage cans that are compost garbage cans so you empty your food in, in a different garbage can now and the garbage truck comes and takes your garbage and takes your food as compost cool so I'm guessing that Victoria's got a land I haven't looked into it yet has a got some kind of land where they're going to take all this food and compost it and ideally they should be selling that like i'm pretty sure that must be in the plans they have like these big um i'm not sure what victoria has but i think vancouver has like they have like these big massive composters too that like turn it and everything where do you get the compost from where do vancouver you? collects uh food waste too the guard the in the, the, you know, the yard trimming yard box? Oh, the yard trimming? Yeah. Now yeah. you can put compost in it. You can put compost in that now? Since, I think, last I guess so. last year. Oh, it, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Oh. They were phasing it in. It, I don't, maybe now it's every week, but it used to be every second week they would collect the, the food waste. And then there's multiple phases, and it would go to every week. Oh. And after, they're going to introduce uh, meat and like all sorts of cooked food and stuff because right now you can't put meat or cooked food oh it's okay, only cool. like your the the stuff you would put in your own the, the garbage thing like you leftover whatever not leftover but not not cooked okay. yeah exactly okay okay, yeah. okay but there are multiple phases and later it'll be like anything food oh that's great cool. or oh i don't know vancouver i'm interested yeah. yeah yeah that's fantastic it was kind of late i thought for mm -hmm. vancouver's Greenest Whoa. city in the planet. Yeah, like no, it's not the can. No, it's not the greenest. City. Not even close. <laughs> like, I don't know. In but Toronto, they're, they're like doing. They have worm composters. You can get like a little worm box supplied. Do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've and seen they those. Have, they yeah. have green compost as well, and they like they have green bins, blue bins, and then the worm, worm bins, and it's all. The city's providing that. Yeah. 
Oh, That's wow. Cool. That's fantastic. Last, I mean, since like 2005 or 2004 or something. Oh, wow. So that's pretty The cool. worm juice is supposed to be amazing for that. Yeah, so, I hear it's yeah. pretty good. Though. I looked into that before a few years ago. Not a few years ago, like two years ago, three years ago. Castings or worm castings? Casting. Like it's like you build a little wooden thing and you have your soil and you put it on a little angle and whenever you want fertilizer, you go pour water on your worm <laughs> bed and you got a little collector here and it collects the juice and you go water your plants and that's it nice yeah 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 super cool yeah super cool mm-hmm.